the sixth problem gives a list of readings on an odometer, a tenth of a mile readings at point A, B, and C coming in to the college. Okay, point A, point B, and point C are well-defined points. Now, if uh, the reading uh, on the odometer, if the reading at the tenth of a mile mark is three and then the reading is six, that means that we have three tenths of a mile. And then from six to nine means we have another three tenths of a mile. Okay? And from four to seven is three tenths. From seven to zero, now we've got to be careful here. Some people will just subtract zero from seven and say that's seven tenths. Clearly, this odometer goes seven, then eight, then nine, then zero in the tenths place. So that's only three tenths. Okay, and the rest of these are equally easy to calculate. Now, do we always get the same result? Okay, let's assume now that the odometer is being read accurately, is it possible that all these results are consistent? So are they consistent? Is it possible that they're consistent? We see here that we have three tenths, but uh, let's see, there's a place down here uh, where we only have two tenths between the seven and the nine, or here between the five and the seven, here between the three and the five. So we see that we read three tenths, or if we subtract these results, we get three tenths most of the time, but significant number of the time we get two tenths. Now let me just write down those results. Okay, well, it looks like we get three tenths six times and we get two tenths five times. So it's almost equal. And I said we had three tenths more often than two. I was getting a little worried by the time I got down here. But it does appear uh, that at least in these readings we got three tenths more often than we got two tenths. Now, is it possible to get both? Well, yes. If the odometer changes just after you reach A, and then it changes, let's say, here and here, then you're going to get three different readings. This could be like 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, and the uh, zero would come out here, which would not be between A and B. So we could easily get three readings between A and B. Um, but we could also get two. If the odometer doesn't change until it gets, uh, let's say, about way over here, and then again here, it's possible that the next change occurs here. So we have three readings that uh, we, we can get three readings in this interval, or it's possible to get two in the same interval. Now you can think about how that works out, but it's certainly possible that there are distances where we would get three sometimes and two other times. Well, we can conclude that the distance from A to B is greater than two, again measuring everything in tenths, uh, because if three changes can occur between A and B, then uh, the distance between the first and the second and the second and the third uh, is one tenth or one unit each time. So it, we have to have at least two units in here. It has to be less than three because if it was greater than three, you can use similar reasoning to determine that it wouldn't be possible to get just two readings in here. You would have to have at least three changes. And if you think a little more about this, you can see that the distance in tenths of a mile is less than the maximum number of changes. and uh, greater than the minimum number of changes. So uh, if we count these, we see that six times out of 11, we get a distance of three. Five times out of 11, we get a distance of two. Now, do you think the distance is closer to three or two based on this information? And how confident are you? Well, most people would say, well, most of the time, more than 50% of the time, we found a distance to be three. So we think 
that the distance is probably more, uh, that the three is more likely than two, which means the distance is probably more than halfway between two and three. The distance is a little more than 2.5. Okay? Now, so the question is how confident would you be in saying that the distance is closer to three than it is to two based on this information on the 11 readings? Okay, well, if you say you're 100% confident, you might want to double think that. Okay, and you should stop and think. I mean, don't just go on and listen to what I say next. Don't even look at what I say next. Let's put it this way. If the distance was exactly 2.5, then getting a 3 or a 2, whether you get a 3 or a 2, would be like flipping a coin. Heads, you get 3. Tails, you get 2, or vice versa. Uh, now, the question is... Um, could you possibly get five heads on 11 flips? Well, certainly that's possible. You know, you, if you do 11 flips a lot of times, you're going to expect to get an average of five and a half heads. So you could get five heads just as easily as you could get six. Um, so based on this information, uh, we have some tendency to believe that it's over 2.5, but we don't have any substantial reason for really believing that strongly. Okay, we think it's around 2.5, uh, but we don't really know which side it came on. And, of course, in flipping coins, uh, we could get four heads or even three. It would be pretty unlikely to get just one or none, uh, but that could happen also. Now, another question, how confident are we? that the distance lies between 2.3 and 2.7 based on these results. Now, you don't have a really good way of answering that. We could, uh, if we had time, uh, analyze binomial probabilities and actually make an estimate of the likelihood of this. But just intuitively, would you bet a dollar or a dime or whatever uh, on that, or would you bet that it's outside of that range? What do you think? Okay, now I'll comment. If we did this 1,100 times, which would take me a few years coming in and out of the college, an average of uh, 10 times a week, say, uh, but if it was 600 out of 1,100, then we would be much more confident that the distance is over, uh, is closer, let's say, to 3 than it is to 2. 6 out of 11 uh, if you flip a coin 11 times, just about anything could happen. If you flip a coin 1,100 times, it's unlikely that you would accidentally, or just by statistical chance, come out with 600 heads. You'd probably be in the range of 530 to 580, but 600 would be pretty unlikely. You'd have a, a better than 90% chance of being in a range uh, pretty close to 550 and probably not even a 1% chance of being that far away. And of course, that, that's an intuition that you would have to gain. The thing you should understand is that if we have a lot of results, you're going to be much more confident that the distance is closer to 3 than it is to 2. Okay, if I've done these correctly, we find that going from B to C, 6 times out of 11, the distance was 3 tenths. 5 times out of 11, the distance was not 2 four tenths, but that should be 4 tenths. I'll correct that. Okay, so the distance is probably closer to 3 tenths than to 4 tenths, but again, we're just as unsure as we were over here that the distance is closer to 3 tenths here than to 2 tenths. So you want to think about that a little. Then think about the question, uh, based just on these results, not on anything else that you can determine from this table, because you can answer uh, the question from the table. But based on these results, what do you think is the maximum and what do you think is the minimum distance from A to C? Just based on the fact that 6 times out of 11 from A to B, the distance appeared to be 3, but 5 times it appeared to be 2. Or, or, you know, we, we had three changes uh, at the tenth of a mile, or two changes. Um, and going from B to C, um, six times out of 11, we appeared to be closer to three than to four.
Okay, so what we know now about the difference in odometer readings, uh, just reading in tenths of a mile, that from A to B, six times out of 11, we got three changes. And five times out of 11, we got two changes at the tenth of a mile level, which means that uh, the, and, and we talked about how we conclude this, we're sure if these readings were accurate that the distance from A to B is not more than three, not less than two. And since these are almost equally distributed, we think that distance from A to B is probably somewhere near 2.5, although we don't really know how far from 2.5 it would be reasonable to uh, extrapolate. Um, we don't know just how near we can really expect to be to 2.5. We know we're between 2 and 3. B to C, similarly, we think we're somewhere near 3.5, but we don't know how far we might be on one side or another based on just 11 observations. So what do we conclude about the distance from A to C? Think about that. I'm going to go on here in a minute, but you should pause and think about that. Well, the distance from A to C is probably near 2.5 plus 3.5 equals 6 tenths of a mile. Uh, now, we don't know, though, on which side. We know it's not over 7 because this can't be over 3 and this can't be over 4. We know it can't be less than 5 because this can't be less than 2 and this can't be less than 3. So we can certainly say that 5 is less than the distance from A to C is less than 7. We expect it's kind of close to 6, but we don't know on which side and we don't really know how close. We can make some sort of a conjecture based on a couple of graphs. Uh, here, the distance from A to B can't be less than 2, can't be greater than 3. So the distance has to be in here somewhere. And we think, based on our limited amount of information, that it might be somewhere close to 2 and a half. And similar for distance B to C, between 3 and 4, um, probably uh, or, or, again, based on limited information, we think maybe close to three and a half. Now, uh, we got more threes than twos over here, so we think maybe this thing uh, maybe has the highest probability a little to the right of two and a half. But I'm going to draw now a curve that could maybe indicate the relative probabilities of the various distances between 2 and 3. Highest around here and down to 0 at 2 and 3. OK, there's a non-zero probability anything uh, a little more than 2, but not quite 2, a little less than 3, not quite 3 could occur. Um, but based on our information, we think that's unlikely. And we could do the same thing here. Now, the exact shape of these curves and other characteristics um, we don't know enough to analyze. But right there's kind of a picture of a probability distribution for distances AB, distances BC. And we could make a similar picture for distance AC. We know it can't be less than 5, can't be greater than 7. We think that most likely it's pretty close to 6. Um, but again, anything from 5, 2, and 3 up to 7, 3, and 4 is theoretically possible here. Now, we could go a lot deeper into the analysis of these curves and how they'd be combined, but we need a lot more machinery. And that comes later when you have much more mathematical experience. Just the intuitive idea that these could be combined into this in some way, though, is really worth having.